Welcome back. In this video, we will be discussing one of the most common problems presented concerning the esophagus, foreign bodies. Foreign bodies can be anything which makes the potential damage to the esophagus and the surrounding soft tissues very concerning and challenging to plan for. So, let's first discuss how these happen. Esophageal foreign bodies can be inanimate objects which may cause varying degrees of obstruction through the esophageal lumen. They may lodge into the esophagus due to them being too large or they have sharp edges that become embedded in the mucosa, which is very dangerous. These are less common than gastrointestinal foreign bodies. In the radiographic image shown, a radiolucent material is seen on the area of the thoracic esophagus. The most common foreign bodies in dogs and cats are bones, fish hooks, and dental chews or treats, among a lot more. The usual area where foreign bodies are lodged into are the thoracic inlet, the heart base, and the esophageal hiatus. If you notice, notice, these areas are where the esophagus is physiologically narrowed because of the size of the extraesophageal structures. In the heart base, we know that the heart would occupy that area. For the esophageal hiatus, you're entering a, an abdominal cavity wherein there is a lot of uh, abdominal contents and the Esophageal hiatus only has enough room for the normal dilation of the esophagus when food bolus uh, traverses into it. Radiographs are very important diagnostic tools in finding foreign bodies or confirming the presence of foreign bodies within the esophagus. So I do hope at this time of the semester, you would have a rough idea as to how to interpret these when I show them to you. A brief take on the radiographic anatomy. Let's see if you have enough knowledge to follow through with the discussion. So I apologize for the zoomed in image of uh, this x-ray because I would want to focus on specific structures. That's why I zoomed it in. Sorry if the whole thoracic cavity and the body is incomplete. So, um, first off, easy structures. We could easily find the heart right here. Of course, the lungs right here. Some lobes are very apparent. Um, the liver would be this one. A part of the stomach is seen with the uh, gas-filled uh, radio pad, the lack of radio opacity. And then this would be the cranial cruise of the diaphragm. I'm not sure if it's the left or the right. Um, and then we go into this one, this tubular organ, which contains air. So that would be hmm, this one. You could actually see the cartilaginous rings right here. Yes, that would be the trachea. Good. So... What else are we looking for? Um, connecting to the heart, this, this would be the caudal vena cava. A part of the cranial vena cava is here. Then this lung is not looking good though. Yeah, you have a lot of opacities right here, bronchial patterns and all. But our focus is the esophagus. But how can we visualize it in a radiographic image? We know that in interpreting x-rays, you have to know the density of the structure that you want to see. For example, the bone would look more radiopaque than the heart because it has its calcium deposits. A heart would register the same way as a soft tissue. Same thing with the esophagus. The esophagus here, which is pointed by the black arrow, is just this simple radiolucent tubular organ which narrows as it goes through the thoracic inlet and then you cannot see it as evident as you've seen it here so it's quite challenging but the thing is when you see the esophagus and it's not like this all right 
then there's something wrong with it. If it's bigger than that, then there's something wrong with it. So if this is the trachea, as we know, air would register as black in an x-ray. And this is the esophagus, right? We lose it at that point of the thoracic inlet. And you just trust that it's there. What is this, though? Mm. That is not an artifact, you guys. <laughs> mm -hmm. Any guess what else, what other tubular structure would be going from the, at least from the thoracic cavity upwards? I think some of you would have an idea already. Yep. That is actually the cranial vena cava. And the white radiopaque structure that you see is a central line. It's a central intravenous catheter that is placed through the external jugular vein to go into the cranial vena cava. So keep your radiographic anatomy knowledge in mind when you listen to our lecture videos. Look at this radiograph of the lateral thorax. This shows an esophageal foreign body. But where is it though? Can you see it? Try to remember how a normal radiographic anatomy looks like. Where is the esophagus supposed to be? What are the structures that surround the esophagus? And what are they supposed to look like? Can you see it? Can you even visualize the esophagus? So we can see, of course, we can see the heart. We can see the liver, a big stomach, which is full of food, as you can see right here. So what else? The trachea. The trachea is showing a very good sign or, you know, yeah, a sign that will point you to, to think about, oh, maybe there is a foreign body there. Look at the direction of the trachea. Okay. In here, it's normal, and then it curves downward. It, it curves ventrally, which is not normal. It's supposed to go straight, especially since the dog is lying on its lateral uh, side when done with this x-ray. So it's supposed to just be you know, relaxing like that. But it's displaced ventrally right here. You see this right here, sign of air. That is actually a part of esophagus. So, I think you now have an idea where the foreign body is, right? There it is. Now, we have to emphasize that not all foreign bodies will show in a radiograph. Not everything is radiopaque or would be as evident as the bones in the body. Sometimes it's like this, like a soft tissue, like a haze. But even if you cannot really see the foreign body, the pathologic response of the esophagus to the foreign body will show in a radiograph. Esophageal obstruction leads to food being blocked, uh, blocking the esophagus and it not passing and the body wanting to regurgitate it. This causes esophageal distension. So that's one thing you can see in the x-ray right here. You see this distension and Later on, it would disrupt the neuromuscular function of the esophagus and reduce the peristalsis. In cases wherein the foreign body is in the thoracic esophagus, you might be able to see respiratory signs in your patients when this foreign body damages the esophageal mucosa and tears the wall and causes an esophageal perforation. Clinical signs of patients with esophageal foreign body would depend on the size of the foreign body, the degree of obstruction, the duration of obstruction, the severity of the esophageal damage, and if there is an esophageal perforation, they would exhibit gagging or discomfort, hypersalivation because of the continual irritation of the esophageal mucosa, so if there is a continual sensitization of the sensory nerves in the esophagus, 
that would make the animal's brain say, oh, it's eating, food is flowing, so I need to produce more saliva. So at times, hypersalivation is observed. Acute onset regurgitation is also observed due to the efforts of the esophagus to remove the foreign body. Since the patients cannot eat, they will suffer from anorexia. If they try to eat, they would experience difficulty in eating. Persistence of foreign bodies would also increase the peristaltic activity since the foreign body is felt as a food bolus. With increased esophageal peristalsis, pressure necrosis occurs, which leads to perforations. If there is esophageal perforation, clinical signs would be more specific to the respiratory system. Examples are coughing, difficulty in breathing, elevated respiratory rate, serious to mucopurulent discharges, fever, and lethargy. All of these can lead to a secondary complication such as aspiration pneumonia, pneumothorax, and pleural effusion. The primary diagnostic tool would be a radiograph, but there is a lot more that you can use before you go to this level. Starting with the basics, patient history can help if the owner is already suspecting a specific food or material that the animal could have eaten accidentally. Or clients could be honest enough to say if they fed the animal something that could have caused the problem. Owners can also help in distinguishing vomiting from regurgitation episodes. The presence of clinical signs, even if they're quite general, can also help you in arriving to your diagnosis. For the imaging, plain thoracic radiographs are indicated to check for abnormal radiopacities in the entire esophageal length. Also, check for esophageal dilatations. Imaging can also be done with endoscopy wherein a camera is inserted through the mouth to visualize the esophagus and the stomach mucosae. Another simple way of diagnosing Diagnosing esophageal foreign bodies is by simple palpation. Palpate the ventral neck of the animal, and there should be only one palpable firm tube there. That is the trachea. If you can feel another, then the esophagus, specifically the cervical esophagus, may contain a foreign body. However, there is no way of knowing what you palpated unless you conduct more diagnostic methods. Remember, if you palpate something in there, that can be a foreign body, that can be a mass, that can be a cyst on the esophagus itself. So better supplement yourself with other diagnostic methods available. This is an esophagram. An esophagram is done by administering a contrast material to the esophagus to visualize its patency. These are rarely necessary to identify the foreign body, but it can help identify where the foreign body is. This is commonly used to assess the severity of a megaesophagus and esophageal fistulas, although it can easily reveal perforations as well. If you are going to do this, Make sure that you use a water-soluble organic iodine contrast material like Omnipec, which is uh, the brand name, the generic name for this contrast media is Iohexol. Since barium is not recommended, because in cases wherein esophageal perforation is suspected, leakage of barium into the thoracic cavity can easily lead and worsen aspiration pneumonia. Once esophageal foreign body is suspected, what should we do first? We will discuss the different treatment options in our next video.